Nothing like a strong woman that takes what you want. That's powerful. We make history when you step on that football field. Now's the time to release that anger, that pain on them. Do you believe in miracles? They don't deserve no mercy. Them getting put down or they get laid down. The most successful people in life have failed. We have failed. Everything we've ever asked for is right in front of us right now. So let's get it. We are in Denver, Colorado for a Western Conference battle. Welcome inside the broadcast booth of LFL Football Night. Mitch Mortaza and Bobby Huco. We've got a Los Angeles Temptation team battling the Denver Dream. The Temptation are a surprising 0-1 to start the season, losing that one 34-19 against Seattle in week one. Now, when you talk about the Denver Dream, this is a team that's returning to health finally, and they're far improved from their 2018 season. They sure are, but for Los Angeles, this team is a very interesting team. They're very dysfunctional off the field, but on the field, when they're on, when their quarterback's on, their running game's on, they can compete with anyone. You mentioned that game against Seattle, a lot closer than the score indicated. Their quarterback, Ashley Salerno, could not connect with the receivers. The running game was the only thing going. If I was offensive coordinator Rory Derry, I would give the ball 20 times to Nas Johnson, their number one running back and their number one weapon. Well, let's talk about the Denver dream here. We talked about it. Their offseason was kind of tumultuous. They did have a coaching change with Marcus Juniel, but they've gotten bigger and more physical. What are your thoughts on this team? And more importantly, is there a key for them to be competitive and possibly surprise Los Angeles tonight? Well, their problem in 2018 was just that, injuries. Nicole Curry, she was out with an ACL. She's still not back. She's almost 90%. She'll play next game, but not tonight. And Bree Quintana, she broke her leg. She is 100% and will start tonight for Denver. You talked about Nicole Curry. We saw the definite change on that Denver defensive side of the ball when Curry went out late into the season. Their secondary was absolutely scorched, Curry being a safety. But Bree Quintana, I think that's the one injury that really resonated with most fans around the league, a gruesome leg break. In fact, our own Heidi Golznick met with Quintana earlier in the day to talk about her return from that injury. Thank you, Mitch. Everyone that plays tackle football understands the potential and likelihood for injury. However, the injury Bria Quintana suffered versus the Omaha Heart was, as you said, gruesome. Most did not expect Quintana to return to playing LFL football, but fast forward 12 months, Quintana is not only playing, but excelling at running back and middle linebacker. I met with Quintana earlier in the day to discuss her injury. Bria, you suffered one of the most gruesome injuries in LFL history. Take me back to that moment. When did you know something was wrong? That very moment, my adrenaline was up, you know, and I knew something was wrong, but I didn't feel a thing at all, so. How did all of the support from across the league feel after the injury? It was such a blessing. It was amazing to have so much support um, from fans, from, you know, other teams, teammates. It was just amazing. Quintana is truly one of those blue collar throwback football players who would probably wear a leather helmet if asked. It's great to see her back at 100%. Back to you guys. Thanks, Heidi. Tonight is a must win scenario for Ashley Salerno, Monique Gaxiola, and the Los Angeles Temptation. Let's get it started next. Back to LFL football night in Denver, Colorado. Mitch Mortaza and Bobby Huco on the call. Heidi Goldsnick working our sidelines. The Denver Dream will have the ball first, and they had quite the offseason. I'm really impressed with head coach Marcus Juniel. What he did, he went out recruiting, brought some new athletes in. We knew he had Brittany Pray, our scrappy quarterback, but she needed help in the backfield. She had one good back, Liz Kamak. Juniel went out and brought in Kashela Yunus from Florida, from Fram U, a speedster who could be the opposite of Kamak, who's the bully up front. Liz Kamak is really their horse on this offense, undersized, 
but could become a franchise type back. And when you look at Brittany Perea's numbers in 2018, not very impressive. Why? Because they had virtually no run game and no blocking up front. You mentioned it in pregame. She's a great game manager. She's an athlete. She's not a great thrower. She is a competitor. That's why I like her. Now she has two backs behind her. She can use them all night. A surprising development. That is Eunice, the rookie running back, getting the start over Liz Kamak. And they're going to go to the rookie back. That's Eunice. A nice six-yard carry as now we meet Denver's starting offense. Stacey Harmon, center. Jessica Bauman, tight end. Brittany McHale, tight end. Bree Roy, wide receiver. Jessica Poole, wide receiver. Kashayla Eunice, running back. Brittany Puria, your quarterback. All eyes tonight are on quarterback Brittany Perea. Last year we said if you put some talent around her, she could become a solid quarterback. Well, you know what? The head coach, Juniel, he put talent around her. And I think that's the most important thing right there. That's a four-yard carry by Perea. But really, her downfall has been poor decision-making, causing unnecessary turnovers via interceptions. When it's not there, she's told all offseason, to just keep the ball and run with it, live to fight another day. She did that right there. Well, sometimes in the pocket, she's like a box of frogs, all jumpy. She needs to stay in the pocket. When she gets out of the pocket, that's when she makes mistakes. Perea back to pass now from the shotgun. Rolling right, looking across the middle, now checking down. That was deflected and caught by Marissa Lopez. We do have a flag. This should be a pass interference on Los Angeles. That's not even gonna be close. Brianna Roy coming across underneath. Mo Gaxiola almost takes her head off way before the ball got there. Denver's still gonna have the football. Yeah, you can't lay that at the doorstep of Perea. That was clear pass interference and our first call of the night coming up here from head referee Tony Bates. Pass interference on the defense number 12. Spot foul, automatic first down. They're calling Danielle Harvey on the pass interference. That was clearly Monique Gaxiola. I kind of like that, though. She's delivering a shot across the bow early in the game. She's, in other words, she's telling the receivers, don't come in the middle. That's what's going to happen. So after that pass interference penalty, ball on the Los Angeles side of the field. A first and 10 from the 23. That's Eunice again getting out in the open field. Another six-yard carry by the rookie. Let's meet L.A. starters. Sherry Waga, the end. TJ Anderson, defensive end. Monique Gaxiola, middle linebacker. Ann Erler, free safety. Marissa Lopez, corner. Danielle Harvey, strong safety. Delaney Hall, corner. A big change in that LA defense. All fantasy cornerback Chelsea Hart is not starting tonight. Enter Melissa Lopez at safety. Danielle Harvey and Delaney Hall at corner. Big change for LA. Absolutely. I think they've gone to more pass coverage oriented corners versus tackling corners. And that's Eunice again moving the sticks for Denver. A four yard carry that'll set up a third and one. I really love the addition at Eunice at running back. She's very explosive. This is the first we've seen of her ever in the Denver lineup. And she is as advertised by head coach Juniel. She can fly. She can cut in a hole like that. Her and K-Mac, this is going to be fun to watch. I like this approach and strategy early for Denver, taking some of the pressure off of Brittany Perea with this run game. Now Perea from the shotgun, buying some time with her feet, rolling right, looking to Jessica Poole. That was nearly intercepted by Ann Erler. Ann Erler, maybe the top free agent brought in from Los Angeles this year. She was previously in Green Bay, an all-fantasy football player. Great addition for the temptation. And Jessica Poole, there's a look at her. I think they're pretty high on Poole. They liked her development in the offseason. This is her rookie year, and they're going to look to feature her a lot in this offense. They have two good receivers in Roy and Jessica Poole. All they need is Brittany Perea to be able to get accurate and find him in the secondary. So now a fourth and one, a delayed handoff. That's Eunice. Eunice being pulled down by Sherry Awaga. But that'll be Denver's third first down of this drive. This Denver offense is opening a lot of eyes around the LFL right now. Everybody thought Los Angeles, the former champs, would come in and destroy Denver. This first drive, they're putting it to the temptation. Yeah, they're being conservative, as I said earlier. 
and they're going to what works, and that's Liz Kamak. And I got to tell you, at least early on, I am really impressed with Kishela Yunus. Yunus is solid. She's a great back, great combination. They have two receivers. Now it's up to Perea to put it all together. First and goal, ball at the nine yard line. Perea under center. This time Kamak in the backfield. She'll get the ball. And you saw the explosiveness of number five, Liz Kamak. Watch the trap block by Stacy Harmon. This is definitely a new look Denver team. Watch this, bam, opens the hole for K-Mac. They are moving the football right now. It's a shock and awe offense, destroying the front of LA. That five yard run setting up a second and goal. The numbers on K-Mac last year, an impressive season despite no blocking up front. That's Perea under center. A toss right to K-Mac. K-Mac trying to get the edge. Great job on the corner there. That looked to be Danielle Harvey and Sherry Awaga. Harvey came up and then Awaga finished it off. Running into Sherry Awaga is like running into a Mack truck. I mean, she should have a license plate instead of a number on. I would not like to go one-on-one -on -one against her. This will be the ninth play of this drive. Denver cannot afford to stall out here. They'll set up a third and goal inside the four yard line. Do you keep it on the ground here with K-Mac? I think you have to. Look, you're inside the five right now with K-Mac and Eunice. Keep going to him. Perea from the shotgun, her receivers flanked to the left side. Dropping back to pass. This looked to be a busted play and she'll go down. TJ Anderson, the all fantasy defensive end all over Perea. T.J. Anderson, you're either at the table or on the menu. She's having a great season. This is only the second game for Los Angeles, but she's all over the football field. T.J. Anderson. Fourth and goal now for this Denver offense. How big would it be to be able to finish this drive out for Denver? This drive is almost taking up the entire first quarter. This would be huge for Denver. So here we go, buckle in, fourth and goal. The fake to K-Mac, into the end zone! <laughs> Deflected and caught by Jessica Poole. Bootleg action by quarterback Brittany Perea. She's actually looking for number nine, Jessica Bauman. Double coverage, the ball pops up. What an athletic play by Jessica Poole. Denver takes the early lead. Who would have called this? Jessica Poole, the rookie, making a big impact here in the first quarter. At five foot nine, 150 pounds, and as you mentioned, great concentration to get after that football. I think overall this offense looks very different than 2018. They look more fluid, better play calling, better blocking up front. I hope you're seeing the same thing I'm seeing out there. I am. It's a completely different look for Denver. You got to hand it to new offensive coordinator Mark Holm. He put in a great blocking system. The receivers, they know what to do, and the running game looks great. All because of the Hullum. Last year, they didn't have an offense. What a stop there by Monique Gaxiola in her second game back from her hiatus. So our score will remain six to nothing, Denver up. As we get our first look at the snake, Ashley Salerno. Salerno, who's not been to a Legends Cup since 2012, believes this could be the year. She's one of the greatest of all time in the LFL. The problem is she doesn't have the weapons outside. The re receiving core is not like the one she's used to over the years. From the shotgun, that's Delaney Hall in motion. Back to pass, avoiding the rush. Looking down the field to Hall. And just beyond the outstretched arms of the wide receiver. Delaney Hall is the only deep threat LA has. That was a perfect pass by Ashley Salerno. Yeah, you, Hall should have came down with it. Now let's meet LA's Those starters. Shay Scahill, center. Sherry Awaga, tight end. Nine Jiska, tight end. Ann Erler, wide receiver. Delaney Hall, wide receiver. Nas, the running back. Ashley Salerno, quarterback. As we mentioned in pregame, the key to this offense tonight is running back Nas Johnson. She has to play big tonight for LA to have any chance. And on cue, there is Nas Johnson. A nice five yard carry setting up a third and five. Johnson has that short area quickness where she can get around any defender one on one and she always seems to get positive yardage. Rory Derry, the OC for LA has to give her the football tonight. That was one of the frustrations in talking to Johnson in our pre-production meetings. 
she felt she needs to get about 15 to 20 touches per game to be effective. Now, that can be in a variation of the run game and the pass game. Exactly. Get her the ball in space and let her do what she does. Third and five. Hall in motion again. Now picking up the blitzer. This is Salerno in the open field making cuts and smartly getting down an 11-yard carry in a first down for Los Angeles. In her ninth year, that's why Salerno is special. Nobody open in the secondary. She tucks the ball, but what she does differently, in her, early in her career, she'll go head on head trying to run through people. Now in her ninth year, she'll take the yardage to go down. Salerno's never really missed any time due to injuries. The issue she's had has been off the field. Highly publicized last year, missing all of last season for the most part due to off the field issues. If she can get a hold of that, she is a special talent, no question. First and 10 handoff, that's Nas Johnson. Look at the speed getting to the outside. That looked to be about a 10 yard carry by the fourth year running back. I like what I see early in the game from offensive coordinator Rory Derry as opposed to he tried deep one time, which should have been caught. He's doing the counter plays now with Nas Johnson, big yardage, Salerno looks solid at quarterback, and they're moving the football. Make that a nine yard carry by Nas Johnson. So you, now you've got a thunder and lightning here, although they're both more lightning, very small statured running backs, and Mariah Lopez and Nas Johnson, at least early on, Johnson getting fed. That's the key to LA tonight. Give her the football, give Lopez the football, do a little play action passes, they're moving. That's a first and 10 handoff. Nas Johnson breaking through arm tackles. Touchdown, Los Angeles. Wow, LA just needs to save a horse and ride Nas Johnson. Great run by the star running back. She finds a hole, finds daylight. Nobody touching her until she gets to the five and she takes it through everybody. Touchdown, LA. Perfectly named Nas Johnson. She wants us to start spelling it N-O-S, not N-A-S. Pure Nitro is Nas Johnson. The offensive game for LA, I love it tonight. They went all the way back. They answered, they stopped the bleeding on Denver. Now they're gonna tie it up. They're gonna go for two here from the three yard line. That's Ashley Salerno and we've got a penalty. This could be a false start on Los Prior Angeles. Prior to the snap, false start. Offense number 15, five yards, retry, retry. No so clock. that penalty is on Sherry Awaga. It'll back up Los Angeles to about the eight yard line. As a former LFL coach, you hate to see that from a veteran player. You're going in trying to score two, now you're back to the eight. This is a tough play selection. So here we go from the eight yard line. Los Angeles elected to go from two from the three. So it will remain a two point attempt. You've got Nas Johnson and Delaney Hall at the top of your screen and Mariah Lopez at the bottom from the shotgun. Looking left to Lopez. This is Salerno trying to create with her legs. And there is that far improved defense of Denver, Asia Walker coming up on the stop. They came in hard, nobody blocked them. Open early with Shuri Awaga, nobody covering her in the end zone, but Salerno did not see her. Yeah, no options. That defense has gotten far more athletic than it was in 2018. Now get it to, getting back to your earlier point, when Nicole Curry comes back and is 100%, the all fantasy type safety, this Denver team is going to be pretty stout on that defensive side of the ball. The defense is going to be solid. The offense already looks solid after one more drive. I'm telling you, Coach, Juniel has things going on in Denver, Colorado. So a uh, first and 10, 14 seconds remaining. I don't think a lot of people would have thought Denver would be notched up with Los Angeles after one quarter of play. Unbelievable. This is Perea back to pass, looking down the field. Has a receiver wide open. Touchdown, Denver. Wow. Mitch, throw me another marshmallow. Denver is on fire. I've never seen them play like this in two years. Where's the coverage? They came with a full blitz on Perea. Nobody out there wide open in the end zone. They came back in a heartbeat to take the lead again. Unbelievable. That looked like Ann Erler, the safety, may have tripped. And Jessica Poole, how about the performance she has had here in the first quarter? That is two touchdown receptions in less than 10 minutes of football. Jessica Poole playing unbelievable football. Perea standing in the pocket, knows she's going to get hit. The full blitz, she fires a strike, perfect pass for six points. 
Not much of a scoring drive. One play, 35 yards, taking up only 15 seconds. This is Eunice trying to get the edge. They're going to give it to her down on the field, but to me, it looked like she was out of bounds and touched while against the boards. Absolutely. Watch Awaga. She comes up. She hits Eunice, and when you force somebody out of bounds like that, if she hits the wall, that is out of bounds. Absolutely. Okay, now it looks like they're changing the call. They're not going to give her the conversion. So Denver now leading it 12-6 to behind the arm, believe it or not, of Brittany Perea. You know, during the offseason, head coach Juniel, he told us he's going to change the attitude of this Denver team, and he certainly has. Unbelievable first quarter. Now we've got the call. This should be official because it looked like she was touched against the wall. After further review, the player was against the wall with contact. Therefore, the extra point is no good. That's the end of the first quarter. That's the that end is of the first quarter. That is not a popular call here inside the Budweiser Event Center, but it's the right call. And that brings us to the end of one quarter of play. The Denver Dream behind the arm of Brittany Perea and the athletics of Jessica Poole lead this one 12 to 6. LFL Mobile, giving you access to the gridiron goddesses of the LFL with exclusive photos, videos, live game reporting, and fan promotions. LFL Mobile, download on your Android or iPhone. Back to LFL football night here in Denver, Colorado. As the Los Angeles Temptation, the heavily favored Temptation, trail this one 12-6. One thing that LFL fans know is that quarterback Ashley Salerno will not get rattled. This is her ninth season. She has seen everything. She's probably not even shocked that Denver has the early lead. She will come back. First and 10 from the 15. Kind of a bunch set here from the shotgun, setting up Salerno and getting the edge to the outside. What a collision with Kelsey Cristiano of Denver. In fact, let's meet Denver's starting defense. Daniel Brockman, defensive end. KK Phelps, defensive end. Tahir Williams, linebacker. Kelsey Cristiano, safety. Cassiana Moore, your safety. Asia Walker, corner. Ishe Watson, corner. Hey, Coach Juniel told me that defensive front is led by KK Phelps, number 20. Yes. Watch out for her tonight. Yes. So that 12-yard run by Salerno already has the ball on the Denver side. Salerno again keeping it herself. Will gain about six yards on that carry, setting up a second and four. How can't you like quarterback Salerno? You see her run like this. She runs like a fullback and a halfback. Naked bootleg. Not a lot of blocking out there. She gets popped to the head. Positive gain. But you know, last year, a lot of people said she had an attitude problem. I think it's a perception problem. She is such a competitor. Yeah, she's cocky at times, but that's what you want in a good quarterback. Yeah, Ashley Salerno is not going to apologize for anything. The longest tenured quarterback in the LFL. From the shotgun, Nas Johnson. A nice draw play. A five-yard carry for Johnson. And at least early on, it is clear that offensive coordinator Rory Derry is going to focus on the run game. They really are focused on the run game, the blocking up front. Scahill right there, a hook block outside, a seal block, kept everybody inside. So Nas Johnson went around with nobody for another big game. So a first and 10 ball at the Denver 12. This Los Angeles offense putting together a nice drive. Johnson remains in the backfield. Again, another draw to Johnson. This time not fooled at all is cornerback is Shea Watson. Nice play by Watson, but what really happened is that Johnson ran right up the back of Danielle Harvey. Sometimes this offensive line block's so good, their own running back can't get through. So well, Bob, so well. There's that Florida education again. All right, so you got Sherry Owaga, one of the better blocking tight ends in the game, not able to get out of the way of Nas Johnson. A second and 11 ball at the Denver 13. From the backfield again to Johnson. Look at that defense pursue. Carrie Phillips, the defensive end. 
I mean, this team has gotten so much more athletic than last season. It's just a complete attitude change in Denver. Coach Juniel, this team is hungry. They want to fight. Last year, they were on skates all year long on defense. They're coming out with fire tonight. After the back-to-back -back losses by Nas Johnson, this L.A. offense now backed up to the 14-yard line, setting up a third and 12. Keep in mind, this is four-down territory. Delaney Hall in motion from the shotgun. Salerno back to pass, heaving it into the end zone. Touchdown, Los Angeles. The seldom used Danielle Harvey with a 14-yard touchdown reception. What a read by quarterback Salerno. One-on-one -on -one coverage. Isaiah Walker had her back to the football. Didn't know it was in the air. The ball came right over her head into Harvey's hands. Anytime you see a DB not looking at the quarterback, you got a chance to throw it up like that. Great play by Salerno. Yeah, Walker was completely yeah. lost. Not the best cover corner, a good tackling corner, but simply outmatched there in the open field by Danielle Harvey. Los Angeles lining up from the one yard line. Salerno calling her own number and walking into the end zone. So after trailing this one 12 to six, LA goes back on top 13 to 12. Who would have thought this game is a barn burner here in the second quarter? LA came right back. Let's see if Denver can answer. Yeah, I think that's the key for a young team that's still learning its identity. If you're going to be tested here by Los Angeles, you've got to respond here. Well, Brittany Pereira, when we saw her play last year, we knew she's a fiery competitor just like Salerno. I wouldn't be surprised if she came right back. Well, the interesting question is going to be, can Mark Hollum, the OC, depend on Brittany Perea here. Back to pass, a deep drop by Perea and sacked. No, breaks through the arm tackle. It finds a receiver and then the receiver drops the ball. So a lot of heroics resulting in absolutely nothing. Brittany Perea, if she steps up in the pocket, she has a pocket, but no, she goes outside the rush. She should have been sacked almost for a safety, but she's such an athlete, she throws it up into the hands. It's dropped, but one thing Perea will give you is excitement. Wow. Yeah, you're not going to get out of the grasp of TJ Anderson, the all-fantasy defensive end often, but Brittany Perea showing her athleticism, and look at the command she has of this offense. We did not see this last season. Second and 10, deep drop again, throwing down the seam into coverage. That pass was intended for Jessica Bauman, and there were a whole host of LA defenders all over it. That was actually the right read by Perea. She was trying to go underneath to Bauman, but Jessica Poole, the wideout, was supposed to clear out coverage with a nine route. She hooked up, which brought coverage right into Bauman. Good read, bad play by the receiver. So now a third and 10 as we approach the five minute mark of the first half. You've got Denver on the march once again. Liz Kamak in the backfield. Perea from under center gonna give it to Kamak. Kamak has a lot of room, loses the ball and able to recover it. That was a scary moment for this Denver offense. K-Mac fumbled the ball on her own, got a lucky break recovering it. That could have been a really big gainer if she didn't fumble the football. But I do like the call by O.C. Hullum. Going back to what got him there, the running game. Eunice and K-Mac keep feeding them the football. So that was a seven yard carry after the fumble, tack on another two yards. So a nine yard advancement setting up a fourth and one. I think you gotta keep it on the ground here and move the sticks. You could go to either back here, the speed with Eunice or the power of K-Mac. Here it is. This could be the play of the first half thus far. From under center, delayed handoff to K-Mac. And look at the edge being sealed in that LA offense, providing no running lanes for Liz K-Mac. Chelsea Hart playing with a chip on her shoulder for not starting tonight, came up and made an outstanding play turning K-Mac around and stopping them on fourth down. Yeah, that could be the turning point of this game. We'll have to see how the rest oh, of it unfolds, too, but what a stop.
by this LA defense to get the ball back. I think it came back with her size and her power. If she would have stayed straight on and took on Chelsea Hart one on one, she might have got the yard. But Hart came out like a heat seeking missile and took her backwards. Yeah, I think you've got to have a power back in the LFL. Right now, with Liz K Mack at 5 3 and Eunice at 5 3, that's just not going to get it done on, on short yardage. Well, it showed. She didn't want to go one on one with Hart. First and 10, LA's offense in great field position. Handoff to Johnson. And Johnson cutting her way up the middle. A 12 yard carry. You got to like the suddenness of Johnson. A great block on KK Phelps actually put her back in the Roach position, open up a huge hole. Good call by the OC. Nas Johnson showing what she can do. Nas Johnson has really become the go-to back here in Los Angeles. And you can see she's favoring that right leg. We'll see how that plays out. But she became the go-to back after the departure of Carmen Borsell, the F-150. Now a first and 10 at the Denver 12. Back to Johnson. And Johnson going to try the right side. A seven-yard carry. So this Denver defense started out playing pretty physical, but now kind of being run over. Nas Johnson has a little limp right there. I, hopefully that's not a serious injury, but she's taking herself out. Not a good sign for that L.A. offense. Los Angeles will have to look to their backup running back, Mariah Lopez. In the meantime, we're going to take a break here from Denver, Colorado. Often trailing in the first half, but Los Angeles mounting a rally and taking the lead 13 to 12. Back to LFL football night from Denver, Colorado. Before we get back to action, let's go down to the Guess field. Guess what? You haven't stopped that motion every fucking time. If you see that motion, you need to fucking crack down on that shit and force it back. All right? Stop fucking being afraid. Stop fucking being afraid and play physical. Here we go. We got to stop them here. You got to have a goal line Let's stance go. here. He's turned this defense into killers. He's right. There's no pursuit. When they do that sweep, they come with a sweep right. They bring the motion over, and they're sealing off the entire right side of the Denver defense. He's saying, if you see that motion, come up hard. Cornerbacks and defensive ends, and shut that off, turn it around. So now a second and goal, and there is the backup running back, Mariah Lopez, in the game. Clearly, Nas Johnson suffering a leg injury, lower leg injury. That's Lopez. Not missing a beat is this LA offense. Great blocking on the outside, and Lopez walks into the end zone. Watch Lopez read her block. She got just for inside coming down. You got Hall kicking out. She goes right through the hall, walks in the end zone. Mariah Lopez coming out of nowhere. Her twin sister, Marissa Lopez, also on the roster as the starting safety. These two did not touch the field last year. Worked their butt off this offseason, and they're starting now. All that Lopez needs is time. You see she can run the football. She just needs touches. Here's the extra point attempt by Salerno looking to the end zone and caught Hallie Jiskra. The free agent tight end signed from the Chicago Bliss. We saw the impact she made last week in Seattle. And here again, picking up where she left off. Always a clutch receiver, but a great read by Ashley Salerno. They came with a corner blitz. They had Watson, number six, coming off the edge. She wasn't even looking for just her to come out. She was wide open. Great read by Salerno, getting her to football. We talked about this on the previous Denver drive, them having to keep pace with the Los Angeles offense. And here we go again, trailing it by eight. Perea from the shotgun. Eunice with a deep drop behind Perea. Now down the field. Intended for Jessica Poole. Poole not able to win the 50-50 ball. Poole's becoming a major target on this offense. Not able to haul that one in. And we're going to take a two-minute break. Los Angeles, after being down most of the first half on the legs of Mariah Lopez, lead this one by eight. Back after this. Back to LFL football night for the final two minutes of action here in the first half as the Denver Dream trail the Los Angeles Temptation 20 to 12. Not sure why offensive coordinator Mark Hollum throws it deep like that. The running game 
is what got him down there with K-Mac and Eunice. Go back to it. Second and 10 play. Perea going to keep it herself, trying to go up the middle, colliding with Moni Gaxiola. Mo Gaxiola, the Hall of Famer in the middle. That's not a good place for Perea to run the football. Mo will take her down every time. A five-yard carry by Perea. Now a third and five from the 20. Back to pass, rolling right, throwing across her body. And that was dropped again by Jessica Poole. There's still a lot of time left in the first half. I'm not sure why they're not running the football. Here's a fourth and five from under center. Oh my God, Brittany Perea just spiked the ball on a fourth down play. And by the way, the previous play was an incomplete pass. There was no need for Perea to hurry up the offense there. Wow, that is unbelievable. That is only the second time I've seen that ever in the LFL history. Anaka Dixon did it when she was playing for Orlando. Today, with one minute and 30 seconds left in the first half, that's huge. You give the ball to LA when you're going in to tie the game. Not to mention the field position. Now Los Angeles taking over on the Denver side of the ball. Plenty of time remaining from the shotgun. This is Ashley Salerno trying to go to the end zone. It looked like maybe the receiver, Sherry Awaga, might have cut off her pattern. I like the call by O.C. Derry. After a turnover, change of possession, try to score quick, but Awaga, like you said, cut the pattern off. Slitter just threw the football away. A second and 10, plenty of time on the clock, minute 23. Los Angeles does still have both of its timeouts remaining, so no need to rush it here. That's Delaney Hall in motion. A draw play to Lopez. And Lopez will get it down to about the 13-yard line as the clock continues to run. Still a lot of time on the clock. Inside trap to Lopez. She knows how to read blocks. I'm telling you, I like her running back. Nas Johnson out of the game. Lopez picking up the slack. Now a third and three as we get under a minute. You could see how cool, calm, and collected Ashley Salerno is. A stark difference from Brittany Perea. Back to pass is Salerno rolling right, going to the end zone. And that is intercepted. Asia Walker, the second year corner, coming up big for this defense. Danielle Harvey wide open in the end zone. Salerno underthrows the football, taking some heat from K.K. Phillips, and Walker makes the play of the day for Denver. Walker has had an up and down first half, missing an assignment earlier in the first quarter, but rallying. This is exactly the stop Denver needed, and with 50 seconds remaining and a timeout, a lot of time on the clock. Both quarterbacks on both teams with bonehead plays. The fourth and five spike by Perea, and then the underthrow by Salerno. Just when I was talking up Ashley Salerno, she throws me under the bus. First and 10 from the shotgun. Perea electing to take it up the middle. A wise decision instead of just throwing it away. As the clock continues to run, we are under 40 seconds. She's doing it with her feet in the first half. She has that one touchdown pass, but I like that. Nothing there. Boom. She made a decision, took off. Denver with some good urgency here in two-minute offense. But they're going to call a timeout. I believe this is a Denver timeout. So now Denver's out of timeouts. Let's take a listen in on the sideline. Y'all got to get your heads out of your asses because right now you guys are only making mental mistakes. They're not beating you. The mental mistakes of dropping balls and not being with the fuck aggressiveness is beating you. They're not fucking shit. They didn't expect you guys to put up what you need. Now I need a fucking touchdown. Here. Head coach Marcus Juniel is right on target with that statement to his team. They're not losing the football game physically. They're losing it mentally. The fourth and five spike by quarterback Barea, that's all mental. The drops are mental. He wants his team to get back in the game mentally first. That's Danielle Harvey running onto the field very late, second and one. Dropping back to pass, looking over to the right side and overshooting her target. That was intended for the running back, Keshela Yunus, 
And she was expecting a flag here. It should have been. She's open. She's behind coverage. She gets pushed right there by Annie Erler. Should have been a call. I'm not sure if she was pushed or if their feet just got tangled up. And again, Denver should be aware that the clock is stopped. That was an incomplete pass and call a huddle. Third and one with 30 seconds remaining. This is Perea under center, rolling right as she often does, looking into the flat. Nothing there, great coverage by Ann Erler. Ann Erler, she was a previous all-fantasy defensive back, good coverage. I would not throw at her. If I was Perea, I would give the ball to the backs, throw underneath, or run it yourself. A lot of time left. Yeah, you could test the rookie safety, Marissa Lopez. Certainly not Ann Erler with her history in Green Bay. As you mentioned, an all-fantasy safety. So now fourth and one with 24 seconds remaining. Perea finally collecting herself a bit, throwing across the middle, and that is caught. So great check down there, meant for Jara Floyd. Now this is where you kill the clock if you're Brittany Perea. So that'll stop it at about 10 seconds and give Denver a second down. You have to wait for your team to be on a line of scrimmage before you spike it. So I think there's a penalty on that one. Again, Perea is not a veteran quarterback. Veteran quarterbacks know this. They know fourth and five, you can't spike it. You know to spike it, you have to have your team on the line. Defense offside number 12. Five yards, remains first down. Now that's interesting. That should be on Denver, not on Los Angeles. I think they just got this wrong, and there you go. They're talking about it some more. Correction. The foul was on the offense, number 12. Over the ball at the snap. So we'll go back five yards. It stays first down. It stays first That's down. That's a good correction despite the crowd not liking it. Jara Floyd was nowhere near the line of scrimmage after catching that pass. Sometimes the officials the in some of these games we watch, sometimes I think they get them right the from Foot ahead, Locker. Go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> Ten seconds remaining, fourth and five. So another must conversion here for Brittany Perea. Back to pass, down the seam. And that's intercepted, throwing into coverage. That's the safety I talked about. Marissa Lopez, and Lopez takes a hit from Jara Floyd. Jara Floyd, the Australian wonder girl. What a hit, unbelievable hit. Knocked her out almost. Bad pass by Perea, nothing there. Gets picked off. Looks like it's going to go coast to coast. And Floyd comes out of nowhere. Wow. Marissa Lopez, I mentioned them trying to test her side of the field versus Ann Erler, responds in kind with that interception, but still down on the ground here. What a first half by the Lopez sisters. Marissa Lopez with a key interception before half. Mariah Lopez filling in for Nas Johnson when she got hurt. Great first half. Let's go down to the field with Heidi. Hi guys, I'm with Danielle Harvey, who is quietly having an impressive first half. Danielle, Denver gave you a bit of a scare early on, but you're seeming to assert yourself. They, they really did at the beginning. We were a little bit nervous, but we got our minds right, we got our game plan together, and now we're executing. All right, best of luck in the second half. Back to you guys for halftime. Danielle Harvey making an impact on both sides of the ball for Los Angeles. These two teams in a battle. 20 to 12 after performances by Mariah Lopez. And on the Denver side of the ball, it has been Jessica Poole. We'll be back with halftime festivities after this. There's gonna come a certain point that I gotta pull your ass because you're not doing what your job has required you to do, that you've been trained to do. Don't cry to me about it. It's game time. I have no favorites in game time. The only favorite that I fucking wish for is to win, win, win. They're not beating us. They're not beating us. We're beating ourselves. Simple as that. Now, you're stalking the league right now. Now, go get the W. We got to shut their ass down. Despite a 20 to 12 Los Angeles temptation lead over the Denver Dream, we've got a ball game as we welcome you back to LFL football night. Mitch Mortaza and Bobby Huco. Bobby, we saw a Denver team last year trail as many as 40 to 50 points at halftime. 
to only be down by eight points to a powerhouse like Los Angeles, they've got to feel pretty good about that. I really like what I see in first-year head coach Marcus Juniel. He got rid of what he called the social media players. He brought in athletes, physical athletes, to come in and compete against the big teams. Tonight, they look great in the first half. Well, let's stay on the Denver side of the ball. Let's talk about their quarterback, Brittany Perea, the second-year quarterback. Certainly not putting on a passing clinic, only competing two of 11 passes in the first half. But she's managed the game well, and she's kept them competitive going into the second half. As a former quarterback, we hate being called a game manager. But Perea, that's what she's doing. Not a great half passing, but she had 18 yards on the ground, and she's got them in the position to win. Yeah, moving the chains, sustaining drives, that's been the difference in the first half for Denver. What about Los Angeles? Here's a team that doesn't get a lot of credit, but they're playing well here again. We have to give some credit. You, and especially me, have been all over <laughs> offensive corner Rory Derry. He's finally going after the talent he has, using his talent. His running backs are some of the best in the league. Nas Johnson, of course. And how about Mariah Lopez tonight? Solid running game for LA. They look good. Yeah, Lopez, the rookie running back, putting on some numbers out there on the field. In fact, she scored a touchdown in the first half. Let's look at the scoring plays. Early on, uncharacteristically, here come the Denver Dream, folks. Engineering a 10-play, 35-yard drive, ending with Brittany Perea connecting with the Jessica Poole on this nine-yard touchdown reception. Still in the first quarter, Los Angeles answering with Nas Johnson, taking this 10-yard run into the end zone. Then right before the end of the first quarter, once again, Perea finding Jessica Poole, this time from 35 yards out. Yes, folks, Brittany Perea has an arm. In the second quarter, it was all Los Angeles. Nas Johnson and Mariah Lopez scoring on the ground. That brings us to our halftime score of 20 to 12 as we look at our stats. We've got a very competitive football game. Look at the total yardage for both teams. Very even. The time of possession also very similar. The one blaring stat line for Denver, they only converted two out of five fourth downs. We've got a great Western Conference battle down to a final 20 minutes. Here we go. The second half is next. Back to LFL football night. And we take a look at our first half impact players, Nas Johnson of Los Angeles and Liz Kamak of Denver. Johnson had a solid 5.8 yard average and Kamak four attempts and a five yard average. That's Ashley Salerno, who we sat down with and asked about the importance of this game. Ashley, do you feel that this game is a must win, despite it being only the second game of the season? Absolutely. I feel like we have to win every game in the season in order to be a championship team. Um, obviously, we lost the last game, but it was against a very good team, very well-seasoned team. But going forward from now, we need to win every single game. That shows you the difference in the two quarterbacks tonight. Ashley Salerno, she's already won three LFL titles. She wants another one. For Brittany Perea, she wants to get her first win. If you're looking to make a mold for a franchise quarterback, that's got to be Ashley Salerno. The arm, the mobility, understanding of the game. The major setback has got to be her immaturity off the field. That's a first down handoff to Mariah Lopez. So Lopez starting the half. And it looks like Nas Johnson may not be returning. That's not a good sign for L.A. Although Lopez is playing great football, another great block by Ann Erler cutting down that Denver defensive end. And then Hall coming outside with a stalk block. They cannot stop the basic sweep of Los Angeles. Now a second and three after that seven-yard carry by Lopez. That's Delaney Hall in motion. They're going to give it to Hall on a jet sweep. And Hall very slow to get around the edge. Will be contained to a, only a one-yard carry. Hall has really disappointed this offense time and time again. Has all the physical traits, the speed, the size, but has never lived up to her billing. Defensively, she's playing solid football. Offensively, she's never hit her peak. She can run. She can run fast, like you say, catch the ball. First play of the game, she drops it. She needs to step up her game and help out this L.A. offense. So now a third and two for Los Angeles. Ball at its own 23-yard line, leading this one 20 to 12. All three receivers flanked to the left side of Salerno. They're going to sweep it that way. Salerno still on her feet. A 10-yard carry. That'll be good enough for a first down. 
As good as this Denver defense played in the first half, right now they're playing that folding chair defense. Tariah Williams, the middle linebacker, made no effort to get at quarterback Ashley Salerno. She was like she was playing touch football. Now a first and 10 at the Denver 17. If Los Angeles goes in and scores here, that's got to hurt the mojo of Denver because all along they've been pretty close. And at times, you mentioned in the first half, they led this game twice. They need a big stop right here or a turnover to stop this L.A. offense. First and 10 handoff, Lopez. And Lopez kind of slow in getting in that gap. She'll be limited to about a two-yard carry. I'm going to tell you what, quietly, K.K. Phillips is having a great game for Denver. She seems to be in every play. She's a Simon Sound. She knows what to do. She stays in the gaps and makes a lot of tackles tonight. And great size, 5'7", 160 out of Evergreen, Colorado. So now a second and eight. Ball at the Denver 15-yard line. A lot of shotgun formations here in the second half. Again, Salerno calling her own number and able to get to the outside. That was an eight-yard carry, setting up a first and goal inside the Denver seven. I really like this game plan of offensive coordinator Rory Derry of Los Angeles. Keep the ball on the ground, play action near the goal line. In the first half, it was Nas Johnson. Here in the second half, it's Ashley Salerno and Mariah Lopez taking the ball right down the field. First and goal, this offense really controlled right now. As you said, a lack of passing, but they've been able to move the sticks on the ground, so why not? Ashley Salerno under center, Hall in motion again. They're going to go back to Lopez. That is Bree Quintana, who we featured at halftime, coming off that gruesome leg injury against Omaha last year, finally making an impact on this game. Now that is a middle linebacker. We mentioned with Tariah Williams in there, she didn't want to tackle, but didn't want to come up. You got Quintana in there, and she attacks the offense. Yeah, Bree Quintana is the prototypical middle linebacker at 5'5", 150 pounds of muscle. Although she is being getting some competition in the middle from Jara Floyd. Floyd, the rookie from Australia. And now Los Angeles lining up kind of in a bunch set on a second and goal as we approach the six-minute mark of the third quarter. This is a design keeper by Salerno. To the end zone. Caught. Hallie Jiskra once again getting behind the defense. And what about the patience of Ashley Salerno to let the route develop? That is a championship play by a championship quarterback. It was a naked reverse. She was hoping nobody would be out there. There was somebody out there. She bide time till the last possible second, threw it in the end zone. And who else? Jistra, the touchdown machine for LA. Another touchdown reception. 26 to 12 now. As Los Angeles tries to blow this game open, they'll go for a one-point conversion. That's Salerno walking into the end zone. So Los Angeles stretches out its lead 27 to 12. And is it time to panic in Denver? It's about time. Watch it right here. There's no pressure from the outside. The cornerbacks, Walker and Watson, for Denver, they don't come up on the sweeps all night long. That's what Coach Juniel was talking about. He's leaving the game. He's out of here. It can't tackle off the edge. He's actually going in the back to meet with his defense, but I'm sure he, he thinks about leaving sometimes, especially last year with some of those lopsided scores. But look, his team is still competitive. They've got the ball. It's a two-score game. A lot of football still ahead of us. What got them to lead in the first half? They're two stud running backs, K-Mac and Eunice. First and 10, Liz k -Mac in the backfield. Let's see if they keep it on the ground. They do. That's Liz k -Mac with the rock, getting to the second layer of the defense. A 12-yard carry by k -Mac. Why they went away from that in the second quarter, I have no idea. Look at the hole. Remember in the first quarter, they're blowing holes open like that. There goes k -Mac, another huge gainer. Yeah, Los Angeles scored all of their points in the second quarter while Denver was blanked. And a lot of that had to do with getting away from the run game. They got lucky with that long pass where Annie Erler fell. They thought they could throw the football in L.A. They obviously can't. So a first and 10 after that 12-yard run by k -Mac. Ball on the Los Angeles side of the field. They're going to go back to k -Mac. And look at Melissa Miles. 
come up from the corner position to make the tackle. Miles with a great tackle, but K-Max, she doesn't shy away. She is striped with courage. Even though that was only three-yard gain, she went head-to-head, -head, got yardage. That'll set up a second and seven. And I think overall, you're going to get some stops on K-Max, but with that speed, she's a home run hitter. The more touches you give her, she's going to break one eventually. Absolutely. Don't forget about Eunice, who's even faster than K-Max. Brittany Perea looking a little more settled than she did in the first half. Looking over that L.A. defense, now under center. Delayed handoff to K-Mac, and K-Mac runs into a wall, namely Monique Gaxiola. Mo Gax only making her second return since she took a break from the game. Our own Heidi Goldsnick sat down with Gaxiola. Mo, certainly you have had an incredible LFL career, but your return versus Seattle was a little bit tough. Are you at 100% for this Denver game? Absolutely. Uh, playing against Seattle, I mean, they're one of the top teams. So coming out against them, uh, first game, really set the tone for us. Uh, we're able to uh, take our mistakes, clean it up, and we're ready for Denver. Mo Gaxiola, the Ray Lewis of the LFL, a Hall of Famer. Her game is back. Yeah, she was a little slow in the opener, but she looks great tonight. This is Brittany Perea in the open field, showing you her mobility. A gain of seven yards, setting up another fourth and one for this offense. Brittany Perea right there, cuts it back inside. She is a great runner as a quarterback. She finds open space, watches her blockers, gets extra yardage, almost gets enough yardage for the first down, but they're moving the football just like they did in the first quarter. Going back to a point I made in the first half, not having a power back, in these short yardage situations, that really hurts this offense. They don't have a size power back. k has got the strength, but you're right, she's only 5'3". k in the backfield. They're going to go to k -Mack. They're going to need a yard. Breaks it to the outside. She'll get more. Touchdown, Denver. Yahtzee, Denver back in the game because of k -Mack. What a jump cut. Just give her the football. There was absolutely nothing there. She jump cuts outside, turns the edge, runs by the all-fantasy defensive back, Harvey, goes in the end zone, Denver back in the football game. You think these offenses, offensive coordinators, I should say, will start listening to us a little bit? We talked about it with Rory Derry of Los Angeles and here Mark Hollum of Denver. If you've got something that works, why get away from it? Exactly. Their game plan was just this. And then what do they do in the second quarter? They open up trying to pass the ball. They're back to the game plan. They're scoring points. So a five-play, 35-yard drive, taking up 309, brings Denver right back in this game. Lining up for a two-point conversion, Perea looking in the flat, ill-advised pass. k -Mac had no chance there. So the score will remain 27 to 18, Los Angeles. k -Mac should get the football every play. Eunice, every other play. Right there, Brittany Perea should have tucked the ball up, ran it herself. There was nothing in the flat out there. Even if they catch the football, they're five yards out. Now, what do you do if you're Los Angeles? You had a lot of success on the ground with Salerno and Lopez. Still a lot of time in this game, so you can't get very conservative. What do you do here? You do the same game plan. They just got your last touchdown. Give the ball to Lopez. Let Salerno run the football. The difference is Salerno can actually throw the football deep. If they come up to stop, she will check off. She can audibleize at any point of the game, according to her coaches. First and 10, ball at the 15 of Los Angeles. They're going to hand it off to Lopez. And Lopez just kind of pinballing her way down the field. Lopez not necessarily going to win style points running the ball, but she manages to get those tough, gritty yards. She kind of lulls defenses to sleep. You don't think she can get there. She's like sneaky athletic, and boom, she gets through a host. She follows a block. She hugs a block. She gets yardage every time she touches the football. And both of these offenses are just churning the clock right now as we're nearing the one-minute mark. They're just ramming the ball down the defense's mouth right now on both sides. Denver's doing the same with K-Mac and here with Mariah Lopez. This was the game plan, both sides of the football. Right now, Brianna Quintana's got to step up and play solid defense for Denver and stop L.A. Quintana's not in the game. That's Tariah Williams, the backup once again. In fact, they've moved Quintana to the secondary. 
This is Salerno rolling left, nothing there. And it appears this Denver defense is really hell-bent on spying Ashley Salerno. Well, you should. She's such a powerful athlete. She can throw the football. She can run right over you. But look, she can dodge anybody back there, gets rid of the football. I'm surprised they put Tariah Williams back at middle linebacker. She's a pile inspector. She shows up late and just watches people. She doesn't deliver hits like Quintana does. Is Shia Watson able to contain Ashley Salerno and force her into that ill-advised pass across the field. Now a second and 10, ball remains at midfield. Again, another design keeper by Salerno, just guiding her way through traffic. A gain of six yards. Look who came up from the secondary, made that hit. Quintana, where's the middle linebacker who should be there? Yeah, if you're not gonna put Quintana in the middle, take out Tariah Williams and put Jara Floyd there. Williams is just completely lost out there. Very slow, can't tackle. There's no reason for Quintana to not be playing middle linebacker when you've got an offense that's purposely going up the middle. She made a middle linebacker play from free safety when that's Williams' tackle right there. And I don't think Los Angeles is going to get this play off. That'll bring us to the end of the third quarter from Denver, Colorado, where both teams exchange blows. First, Liz Kamak. And Los Angeles answered with Ashley Salerno. We'll be back for fourth quarter action after this. When your number is called tonight, step up and make a name for yourself. Speak about all the people who doubt you, who say you can't, and go prove them wrong. This is not about who left this team. It's not about who came back. It's about who's here right now. Now we have to play like we've never played before, ladies. This isn't just football, this is family, sisterhood, it's your life, it's how you live your life. Look to the girl next to you and fight for your life. Fight for the girl who's sitting next to you in this huddle right now. This is all meant to be. Every single one of you is here tonight because of a purpose. We can do this. I know we can. This is the last time I'm going to tell you that I'm going to let you down because I will not do it again. Let them understand that we are not here to play games with them. This is our game. Give it everything you have because all we got is 10 minutes. That's all we got. Back to LFL football night here in Denver, Colorado. The Los Angeles temptation up 27-18 and looking to add a few more points here. Third and four. That's a draw play to Lopez, finally. A Denver corner wants to make a tackle, this time Asia Walker. Now that's how you play cornerback. Play goes away from you, you're holding your ground. Drister comes out, tries to block, you play off the block, get the running back, that cornerback play. Now here's a great opportunity for this Denver Dream defense. Fourth and four, they gotta get off the field here. You have to have a stop, you're down two scores right now. This gets you back in the ball game. A fourth and four at about the 19-yard line. Empty backfield, Salerno calling her own number. Will she get the four yards? She's tackled right at the sticks. Early indication is that'll be a Los Angeles first down. Tariah Williams, the middle linebacker, fourth and four. This is where you have to make the play of the game. The ball was snapped. She did not even move. She's got to come up and make the play on the quarterback. There's no running back, so you know Salerno's going to run it on the sweep. She has to come up, and she goes laterally, sideways. Even if she made the tackle, it'll be five yards down the field. So now a first and 10. Los Angeles deep on the Denver side at about the 14-yard line. And they've got the bunch set again. They're going to keep it on the ground with Lopez. I like Lopez's burst to get to the second layer of the defense. She's got untapped potential. We haven't seen that much of her now that Nas Johnson is injured. It's her football game, and she showed up. She's performing. Yeah, it's good to have an insurance policy like Mariah Lopez right now. If you're a Los Angeles Temptation fan, we have not gotten a report on Nas Johnson. Early indication from her, at least from the medical staff, is that she is expected to return only in an emergency situation. That's good news for LA fans. Nas Johnson will be back at some point. Maybe not tonight, but Lopez, the way she's playing, they don't need her. Salerno 
content to just keep it on the ground and trying to break through the arm tackle of Kelsey Cristiano. She manages to pick up five yards, and guess what? Another Los Angeles first down. It's amazing. It's almost like Tom Brady. He keeps going on like the ever ready bunny, just like she does at quarterback. Bam, 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 every play. She is still the face of this Los Angeles football team. And on the defensive side of the ball, Kelsey Cristiano is a team captain. They're going to need her and Bree Quintana to really step up here at the goal line. First and goal, Lopez in the backfield. They're going to try the right side, make it the left side, and did she get in? They're going to mark her down at about the one-yard line. Watson almost got there, but Lopez, here we go again. She just doesn't look that fast, but she turned the corner and got right down to the goal line. Second and goal. Can Lopez take this kind of workload? She's not used to this. She's got to be loving this. She never thought she'd be playing this much tonight with Nas Johnson, one of the better running backs in the league, but here it is in the second half, and it's all hers. Here we go. Can this Denver defense hold? As the crowd comes to life on a second and goal, K.K. Phelps. Phelps able to get to Salerno, and that'll back up this Los Angeles offense. I'm telling you what, if Denver pulls this game out, she might be the game MVP. She's been all over the field on defense for Denver. Yeah, K.K. Phelps in her second year. One of the few experienced in LFL football. I like the size across this team. 5'7", 160 pounds. That front line can be pretty fierce, especially with Jara Floyd. A third and goal back to Lopez. And Lopez not able to get to the goal line. Kelsey, Cristiano, and Bree Quintana. As soon as we mentioned them, they made the play. I like this attacking defense. Now, you add Nicole Curry in this mix when she comes back for the next game. This is a fiery defense. Let's see if they can stuff LA one more time. Yeah, this is where you make your name as a defense. Can you make a goal line stand on a fourth and goal when you need to get the ball back for your offense? This might be the play of the game right here for Denver. You're right. If they let LA score, this game might be over. Fourth and goal, back to Lopez. And what a block on the edge by Delaney Hall. That was just enough to get Lopez the edge. Great players wear a lot of hats. Delaney Hall, nope, she didn't catch any passes tonight. Nope, she didn't run the ball well. But you know what? Her blocking has been off the charts all night long, blowing cornerbacks away. Her block got Lopez in the end zone. Yeah, Lopez really maturing here. We saw her get some playing time against the Seattle Miss, but this has really been her introduction to the LFL. As they say, next woman up. You know what? Who would have called Nas Johnson getting hurt like this? She came in and played just as well as Johnson. An 11-play, 35-yard drive, taking up eight minutes and seven seconds. And there's another release play to Hallie Jiskra. Jiskra converting on an extra point attempt with that exact same play in the first half as Los Angeles now will stretch its lead to 34 to 18. There's still a lot of time, four minutes and 57 seconds. Just be conservative, move the football on the ground, mix in a couple passes. You're only two scores behind, a lot of time. This Denver offense certainly has some weapons on the outside. We've seen Jessica Poole make some plays down the field. They're going to have to open it up here a little at least because I don't think you're going to make up that gap just running the ball. This late in the game, if I'm Mark Hollum, the OC, I put both playmakers, K-Mac and Eunice, in a game. Get them the ball somehow. This is Eunice with the carry. And that L.A. defense all over her. Marissa Lopez and TJ Anderson. The Denver secondary should take notes of this. When that ball goes outside around the corner, this LA defense explodes and attacks the football. That's Marissa Lopez, twin sister to Mariah Lopez. In case you're adjusting your set, don't do it. They're twins. Second and 10. 420 remaining in the here in the fourth quarter. Handoff again to Eunice. Danielle Harvey all over Eunice. That'll be a loss on the play. When this defense of L.A. is on, there is seven players, but there's only one heartbeat. Right now, this is L.A. football. 
Danielle Harvey, having an all-fantasy type season very early, had a great game against Seattle and picking up where she left off. Danielle Harvey has had an all-fantasy career every year. She plays in and out every game. Ball now at the 15-yard line. This is Perea back to pass. Buying time in the pocket, now going to take off with it. Cuts back inside for another five to seven yards. An 18-yard carry by Brittany Perea. Perea does not give up. She gets to the second level quicker than most quarterbacks when they run the football. Only Salerno can get there quicker than her. But right now, she has them back in scoring position. A lot of time left. I've really liked what I've seen from Brittany Perea tonight, with the exception of how she's handled the two-minute offense. We've seen her connect down the field on the deep bomb to Jessica Poole. You've seen her mobility. She's really growing into this offense. First and 10, ball at the LA 17. Throwing across the middle, nearly intercepted. Let's go! Let's go! That is the Hall of Fame middle linebacker, Monique Gaxiola. And if she didn't deflect this, this could have ended up in the hands of Delaney Hall. That ball should have been picked off. We mentioned Brea has happy feet in the pocket. Sometimes she sees ghosts that aren't there. She had all kinds of time. She should have stood there another five seconds and let the receiver clear coverage for a touchdown. Second and 10, ball at the 16-yard line. Rolling right a lot of time, as you mentioned, in the pocket. This time complete to Vanna Medrano. A seven-yard reception. Vanna Medrano, she is the backup quarterback. They have her playing receiver right now. She's a great athlete trying to get some playing time and score some points here late in the game. I think there's some personnel issues. I want to get back to an earlier point you made. You've got to get Liz K. Mack and Kashayla Yunus on the field at the same time. They're the best weapons you have, and you've got to make up a gap here. And that'll take us to our two-minute warning. That's the two-minute warning. Two-minute warning. We will go into normal timing rules. Normal timing rules. Denver still with a lot of opportunity. Two minutes of action remain. We'll be back after this. Back to LFL football night. Next week, we are in Texas, specifically Austin, Texas as the Acoustic with Michelle Angel host Tamika Robinson and the Chicago Bliss. A lot of polls have that team with Michelle Angel running the team as a preseason favorite. This is their first game we'll see next week. A third and three now as we return to action. Denver must score on this drive and look for an onside kick. Rolling right, Brittany Perea, a lot of time in the pocket. Now it's collapsing around her. Nearly intercepted. Chelsea Hart coming up from the defensive end position. You mentioned Hart did not get the start tonight. So you can tell she's a little more fired up than usual. That's not a bad idea. If she plays like this, maybe not start her for the rest of the season. She's on fire when she comes in the game. So now the last chance for Denver on a fourth and three. We've got a lot of confusion. I think Denver is going to elect to call a timeout here. Timeout. Denver, first charge timeout of the half. And we're going to take a break as well when we come back the conclusion of this Western Conference battle. Let's run it. Listen, calm down. Look. Twins eight. It's there. We gotta calm down. Receivers, get the fuck open. Run your damn route. Stop My left tight end. Run, run, run. 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 It's run. open. If you got a two or a one, if you got a cross around, fucking run. Push the bitch out the way. If you get have the fuck open. Back to LFL football run. night. We took you inside the huddle for the Denver Dream. And that's going to be kind of alarming when your quarterback is championing the run on a fourth and three. Well, they've been running the ball well all night, all three of them. Perea, K-Mac, and Eunice. Three yards, I, I say maybe run the football. The passing game has not been clicking that well, but obviously the coach is going to call a crossing route right now where you settle in a hole, and he wants the receivers just to run patterns, and she'll find somebody open. 
Yeah, I don't think they're on the same page. The offensive coordinator wants a pass play here, and it appeared that the starting quarterback, Brittany Perea, is lobbying for a run play. That's not good confidence in your quarterback for her arm if she wants to run the football, which I think she can, but obviously she can't throw as well as she can run. Well, regardless, they're going to have to convert and get a first down if they're going to have any chance at a comeback down two scores. And yes, LFL teams do have the option of an onside kick inside of five minutes of the fourth quarter. So if Denver scores here, they're still very much so alive. Here we go, fourth and three, ball at the 10. Perea back to pass and over, shooting her target. And I don't think she's aware that that was fourth down. Here we go again. Brittany Perea has no awareness of game situation. That is absolutely unacceptable. That's twice down the first half. She downed it on fourth and five. Here it's fourth down. She throws an incompletion. She okay, thinks she has another play. That's coaching and quarterback and get in the game. Interesting scenario here. A minute 50 remaining. If you know anything about the LFL playoff picture, it can come down to a point differential. So it would benefit Los Angeles to put a few more points on the board here. You've got two timeouts. Is that what you do, or you just try to get out of here? Salerno knows the tiebreaker playoff rules in the LFL. It would not shock me at all if she went for points, because if they didn't make the playoffs because they didn't score late in the Denver game, she would be really upset. I think they go for it. So that was a four-yard carry by Jasmine Edwards, and now they're huddling, which leads me to believe that perhaps Los Angeles, especially with the injury to Nas Johnson, just want to get out of here. You know what, if I'm Hunter Hudson, Rory Derry, get your first win of the season and get out of here. Second and six, ball at the Los Angeles 14. They're gonna fake the handoff, looking down the field, has a receiver, and dropped. That's Fuyuki Hamaguchi, the standout wide receiver from Japan. In fact, the first ever LFL athlete from Japan just drops that one. During the offseason, she is a race car driver. She caught that pass like a driver right there. No hands. Speed went flying by coverage. Great pass by Salerno. Just couldn't bring it in. So Los Angeles is kind of all over the field now. They're huddling. Well, they were previous, and they ran the ball. Now they're taking shots down the field. I don't think they know what they're doing at this point. Third and six. A minute 11 remaining in this game. That's Salerno rolling right. So that'll now set up a fourth down, and the clock will run. It looks like maybe LA will call a timeout. No, she got out of bounds. So now a fourth and six. What do you do here? Because here's the tricky, tricky part to this. If you don't convert and get a first down, you're going to give Denver the ball back on your 14-yard line. There's a lot of time left in the LFL. You, with that onside kick, you're right. This is a tough situation. So this really is a must convert for Los Angeles. A fourth and six from the pocket, wide open. That's Hallie Jiskra to the 10, to the five. All the way down to the goal line. Now they're indicating a touchdown. Wow, Jiskra showing why she's all fantasy most of her career. Look at this, just out in the flat, one on one. She is a big lady at 170 pounds, and she outruns everybody in the secondary. Look at that speed for a woman that size. That is insane. Cassiana Moore, the strong safety, was just beat from the beginning by Hallie Jiskra. And look at the blow Jiskra levels on Brianna Roy at the end of that run. Unbelievable play. You think they were going to be conservative? Look at that. They got their points. I think they were looking to just get the first down, but Hallie Jiskra made some athletic moves in the open field. That's Jasmine Edwards. They're going to convert the extra point. So just like that, Los Angeles up now 41 to 18. It wasn't that long ago when Denver was up in this game. Big turnaround, big comeback by LA, but I'm telling you from top to bottom, this LA team is strong. They're gonna make a run here. They win their last two. They'll be playing Seattle somewhere down the line. Yeah, I think when we saw that Los Angeles versus Seattle game in the season opener, again, that score was not indicative of how close Los Angeles played Seattle. 
there were a couple bad calls away from that game swinging either direction. You're right. That was very close. They looked good tonight. Denver, on the other hand, for their first game of the season, they look okay. And we've got the backup quarterback in now. That's Vanna Medrano. That ball sailing well over Bree Quintana's head. Not sure why Vendrano will be in the game right now. She didn't have the great throwing motion right there. Your quarterback, Berea, needs all the snaps she can get. Yeah, that's the point I was going to make. Put her in this must-pass situation. It's not like she doesn't need the live reps. She needs everyone she can get. And I don't think Vanna Medrano is potentially your franchise quarterback. So what are we doing here? Not at all. This is what we're talking about. This isn't like high school where everybody's got to play. You're trying to beat Los Angeles right now. Second and 10 from the Denver 15. A poor snap back to Medrano. Looking in the flat. That time complete to Brittany McCall. But that won't be for any gain. That's Lindsey Cash. Another backup in the game for Los Angeles. I really like the fire in this L.A. team. You mentioned it early in the game, how having Ashley Salerno all season long, all off season, she got those personal problems last year, missed a lot of games. This team looks like it has the potential to make a run in the West. Well, when you look at the Western Conference, the pred predominant leader has got to be the Seattle Miss. They're number one ranked for a reason. They're loaded on both sides of the ball. And then the Austin Acoustic, we see them next week with the signing of Michelle Angel. Behind them, anything can happen. This is Vanna Medrano back to pass. This is intercepted. Delaney Hall. So Hall really coming on late in this game. Sets up Los Angeles for potentially more points. Ding, the fries are done. This game is over. Delaney Hall playing great on defense like she always does. Great blocking night. L.A., I'm telling you, I like this team. Delaney Hall perhaps maybe has a feed from the broadcast in her helmet trying to prove a point here. We got on her in the first half. Offensively, she's always been solid at safety for Los Angeles. Usually on offense, she'll make a couple catches. Tonight, not so. So now Los Angeles set up inside the three-yard line of Denver. What do you do? Do you take a knee here or do you get more points? It's Ashley Salerno. They go for the score. And come on, these are the pirates. These are the bad girls, I should say, of the league. They've known that way for years, you know. Class does not factor in when it comes to the Los Angeles temptation. This is the LA Raiders of the LFL. Yeah, I think they're gonna try to put some more points on the board here. That's Mariah Lopez flanked to the top of the screen and Fuyuki Hamaguchi at the bottom. Now Hamaguchi in motion. They're gonna go to her on a jet sweep. Hamaguchi, touchdown Los Angeles. That is Hamaguchi's first ever LFL career score. We talk about the LFL being an international sport. The first player from Japan to get in the end zone here in Denver, Colorado. She seemed a little starstruck at the end after scoring, not knowing what just happened. Her first score ever, you're right. She's like, what do I do now? Spike it, throw it up in the crowd. She didn't do anything. We got to work on that. That's a look at Rory Derry and Hunter Hudson. They've got to be happy with this result coming off that Seattle loss. They changed their game plan after the Seattle game, went back to the ground game, throw if you have to. They got Gistra. Who would ever thought that Holly Gistra would be the go-to receiver for Salerno? So now the extra point attempt. L.A. is going to go for a one-point conversion. That's Mariah Lopez in the backfield. They're going to go to Lopez. K.K. Phelps, one of the true bright spots for the Denver Dream, especially defensively, has been the play of K.K. Phelps. K.K. Phelps and her play tonight, her play right there on an extra point, down 47-18. to 18. The 2018 Denver Dream would not have even played, not even want to tackle. They would walk in the end zone. This is a team that wants to win games this year. Yeah, again, the score is not indicative of how competitive Denver was here. I think a couple plays go the other way here in the third quarter, and this Denver team could be going in for a potential win. That's Brittany Perea back in the game, which is also puzzling. Why take her out in the first place? Dropping back to pass, looking down the field, coming back for the ball was Jessica Poole. <laughs> Lindsey Cash all over Poole. Wow, throwing hands late in the game. You knew this was coming. It's L.A. This is what they do. Lindsey Cash playing with some fire here in the fourth quarter. We've got 17 seconds, and they're still going after each other down on the field. 
you got to be careful here for Denver and Los Angeles. You don't want somebody getting booted and possibly facing an ejection for the next game. I think that was innocent. Nothing, a lot of trash talk and a couple throws, but nothing landed. I think that's just L.A. and how they play football. Remind me to never make you commissioner of the LFL. A second and 10 now, 17 seconds. That's Brittany Perea rolling right, trying to get out of bounds and not able to do so. And now we've got a fight on the L.A. sideline as the clock continues to wind down. Holly Gistra, the veteran, not even getting involved, letting the youngsters do that. L.A. showing their colors right now, but a great win for this team. L.A. wins it on the road, 47 to 18. Let's go down to the field. Guys, I'm with someone here who needs no introduction, was away from the game for two years, and tonight gets her first win of her return. Mo, how good did that win feel tonight? It feels awesome. Um, we were expected to win. I think in the first half, we were still trying to find out the kinks. Pulling away in the fourth quarter was, which should have happened in the beginning, but we went back to the drawing board and we fixed it. The difference is, as a veteran team, can adjust that at halftime and basically execute. They're still a new team, not to take you know anything away from them. They held their own, but at the end of the night, it's, we balled out, plain and simple. Guys, Mo Gaxiola and this L.A. team have got a huge monkey off their back and stay in contention. Back to you. I think the return of Mo Gaxiola takes this team to a different level. With her leadership on defense and Ashley Salerno on offense, who knows how far they're going to go. So that will do it for us, partner, from Denver, Colorado. The Denver Dream looking strong early in the first half, only to falter in the third and fourth quarter. For my partner, Bobby Huco, our sideline reporter, Heidi Goldsnick, this is Mitch Mortaza. We will see you next week on LFL Football Night.